That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Slaughterhouse, the sophomore film directed by Matthew Goodhill, uh, which Gravitas Ventures will be releasing August 30th, 2023, a midweek release. Have you seen this director's other first film? Uh, no, it's called Woe, which, uh, much like the uh, sentiment, rather than the Lawrence Brothers. Like W-H-O-A? W-O-E. Oh, like, oh, like woe is like, me. Uh, like woe is me. Not like Black Rob. Not like, like, whoa. <laughs> or, yeah, Joey. Uh, okay, so Slaughterhouse. Emily Young, a senior, wants to be elected as her sorority's president. She adopts a cute sloth, thinking it can become the new mascot and help her win, until a string of fatalities implicate the sloth as the main suspect in the murders. That's the full story. And then, spoiler, Emily does become sorority president. The Yay. end. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's basically it. Mm-hmm. It's very simple. Um, the film opens with Emily at the mall, and there's, like, this dog that kind of gets loose, and she helps save, his, save, like, rescue it, I guess, and bumps into this guy uh, who is named... He's, like, Joe Exotic. His, his... But much better looking. Uh, I like that actor from another movie we saw. Uh, Stefan Kapsik, who you just saw in The Last Voyage of the Demeter. So he's telling her, like, yeah, like, I have, like, these exotic animals I sell. I have a sloth I think you'll really like. And she's like, okay, Okay. I don't know. But Take my card. He goes, well, uh, he tells her that exotic animals will really enhance your social numbers and make you a huge influence. This movie relies heavily on social media, which I kind of liked, which we can get to. But, like the description said, she uh, is sort of encouraged to run for sorority president because the existing president, Brianna, is a total biatch. And she's played by, Bri- Brianna's played by Sydney Craven, who we saw recently in Jeepers Creepers Reborn. Uh, Emily's played by... Is she the lead? Uh-huh. That's her? Mm-hmm. And she's beautiful. Yeah. They're all, all the ladies yeah, are Yeah, they're, they're all fine. They all look like they don't eat. But um, Emily's played by Lisa Ambalanabar. So... The house mother is the one who encourages Emily to run. And she says, you just need something unique about you. So Emily's like, oh, maybe if I get a sloth, that'll set me apart. So she goes, gets the sloth. We need to talk about how she gets it. Sure. Um, Of course, she becomes popular because of it. She ends up winning um, the presidency. But during a very, it's hard to tell what time frame we're in, but the sloth, whose name is Alpha. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. What they're saying is a she, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, start. Alpha's very aggressive. The opening of the film actually is we see uh, Alpha, the sloth, in Panama, where she's from. Uh-huh. And then we see an alligator or crocodile attack her, like a big one. And so we assume she's dead. And then all of a sudden we see the crocodile float to the top and the crocodile's dead. Lacerated from her three toes. <laughs> so... Alpha's a killer, so much so that she has to be medicated, like with these like sedatives. But because of how Emily obtains the sloth, the sloth sort of sees her as a friend, but doesn't like anyone else. So the sloth is injuring people, starts killing people, but the sloth is very smart. Somehow. It can use a computer, a cell phone, it drives a car. So the sloth is on... The social media platform we see in the film is fake, but I'm just going to call it Instagram. The sloth sees on Instagram that Emily took a picture with Joe Exotic. The, the guy, Steven. Oh, oh Exotic? Mm-hmm. So now the Alpha's mad because she thinks they're friends. Mm-hmm. So now Alpha wants to kill everyone. And there's like a nighttime like attack. Well, there's a montage where all kinds of yeah. sorority girls are dead during the... The week leading up to the election? I guess. Uh, But then on the night of the election, when there's a rampage, doesn't bother to hide any of those bodies. So there's a final showdown between Emily and Alpha the Sloth. And right as Emily's about to kill the Sloth, even though the Sloth has been, like, scored with a sword and, like, fully impaled, shot multiple times. Bludgeoned with a a the A paddle. Yep. She's not dead. But right as Emily thinks she's going to kill Alpha finally... For some reason, there is a portrait of, like, the Panamanian jungle hanging in the sorority house. It's just a picture of a jungle and says Panama. (laughs) And Alpha the Sloth points at it like, ugh. And then Emily realizes, like, oh, she probably wants to go home. 
And then we immediately flash forward one year mm -hmm. and we see that the remaining ladies have started some animal active like advocacy nonprofit. The one tent outside of the sorority, yeah. For and they're having a conversation that seems like they should have had that. That the, a week after the event. Or the a, day after the attack. Not a year. Not a year. The end. Uh, okay, I will say But not the end, because Alpha. I assume it's Alpha. We see the final shot of the film is Alpha, a sloth back in Panama. Mm -hmm. Don't know how she got back there, but she's back there. I will say this movie is better than I thought. Yeah, it's definitely better than... Some, I was dreading it because I thought it would be like Zombievers from 2014. Well, I think after Sharknado, there's been this like flood of like super cheapy or even like The Room. Like people trying to make these purposely bad movies. Hacky movies. Hacky movies that are just going to go viral. And they're super poor quality. This is not that. I feel like there was a lot of time and care put into this. It looks nice. The effect of the... The sloth is fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's kind of like Chucky. Yeah. And, and I think it's much better written than the films we are referring to. Sure. That being said, it's a PG-13 movie about a murderous sloth. So it's not getting you there as far as the gore and violence, right? So then I'm thinking, well, it better be funny as hell. And it's not. We needed, we needed some homosexuals to come in here and write <laughs> these mean girls because the... What is his name? Bradley Founder, in the, uh, was the screenwriter, and Katie Lanigan, who stars as one of the girls, is the story concept. This is lacking in all of the very obvious ways that would, would have made it automatically more fun than it is. It almost feels like there is like an unrated, extra gory, violent version somewhere, and then it got edited down for like TV, and that's what we got. The story doesn't need to, need to be smart but the people in it could be okay um what's your pull quote oh i didn't say my pull quote you didn't damn my pull quote slother house feels like an snl skit that was cut right before showtime yeah a couple of characters certainly feel <laughs> like snl alum uh, mine is with a premise which feels like a ripoff of black christmas and gremlins while tethered to an anemic eco-conscious subtext slother house needs to feel more outrageous uh, as a comedic horror film to transcend ideas which never get past novelty. It's like for every funny or cute thing, like moderately funny or cute thing that happened, there'd be like three things that are kind of like, okay. Um, I think most of the characters were likable enough. There's, There was only one that annoyed me. There's one named Zenny. Oh, played by... This last name is sending me. Bianca Beckles Rose. I don't know this actor. Um... But she's giving an accent that is like, I don't, I don't know what it was, but it was unintelligible. Like most of what came out of her mouth, I couldn't understand. And I, she's playing it like she's a really butch lesbian. I don't know, but it that felt like it was trying really hard. She's playing the the comedic relief card so hard. It, it's really obnoxious. It really hovers at the same level all throughout. Every line is being shouted. Uh, nothing funny is coming out of that mouth. I didn't like it. So just going through my notes, Brianna, the rich president, who's not very nice. Uh, you know, that was a good start because we meet her and she's vile. But then the protagonist, Emily, I guess I wanted her to be more likable. She's she's okay in the beginning, but then it's clear that she's she's just not as bad as Brianna, but she's not like a good person she's just like it's like many elections in the united states she's the lesser of the two evils uh including when she goes to pick up this sloth at this suspicious man's house yeah let's talk about how she gets the sloth because the guy had given her his address on his business card she calls him he says yeah the sloth can't wait to meet you i'll be here come on down so she shows up in the middle of the day knocks on the door no one answers so she just walks in and the sloth has already killed the man like, we see the sloth kill him. So the sloth is just hanging out. And Brianna walks right in, goes, oh, pets it, picks it up. And then we see the shadow of, like, a very large cat, like a tiger. Or a lion, something big. Something yeah. super big. And she just walks right out. There's no attempt to try to contact this person again on the phone, pay for the sloth. Diane Fossey would be so mad. She brings it home, and then one of her housemates, after she introduces the sloth and everyone loves it, Someone's like, you know, this is like a wild, exotic animal. Like, you don't even know what its needs are. I thought that was all well done. Probably like, filled with parasites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I thought, when we first knew Brianna, she did say something funny because someone spelled, like her, even though she's the only one running for president, she's launching a full campaign, which I think is cute. And she has like, uh, like posters and someone spelled president wrong. <laughs> so they're, so someone's telling her, you know, you spelled president wrong. That was Zenny. I think that's her one funny that's line. That's her one funny line. And then, and then Zenny goes, are you going to graduate from collage? <laughs> I, it's so what's what we see Alpha doing is so ridiculous. Like creating their own Instagram accounts and driving a car. There should have and been and taking a, selfies and using hashtags. Killer claw, killer sloth. What should I do next? Uh, or found Amanda. <laughs> there are funny moments, and they all revolve around the sloth being cute, murderously cute. I just don't know why we didn't get more of that. What kind of car? Is the sloth driving? A Mustang. It should have been an Alfa Romeo. Uh, something little. Well, because uh, the name. Or the name. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't know why we didn't get more of the sloth just being cute if they weren't going to go super gory. Another thing I didn't like is the entire thing about the murderous sloth is that sloths are slow. But in this one, we see it kind of be fast. I didn't like that. It either needed to be fast, and that's the joke that this sloth is fast, or it's really slow, and it's still somehow massacring people. Like, where was the... Uh, I feel like... The, it, I, I was certain we would get a scene where someone's running really fast, and the sloth is slowly crawling, and then somehow it catches up to them. We don't even get those kind of obvious jokes. Sure, we just get some lines about how sloths are all fooling us because they're acting like they're slow and they're really not. Which makes me think, like, maybe koalas would have made a more interesting subject because they... Uh, eucalyptus, which they like to sedates eat, them. sedates them. <laughs> yeah. If they don't get it, they're a little more irate than we are used to. We see, I mean, again, the sloth being really smart could, like, I feel like that's too big of a character thing to not make that sort of the, like, the main quality of that character. Like, the sloth can use a computer, the, the sloth gets on, like, a, a, like an iPhone and like navigates to a hospital to kill some bitch. And to, to open up her phone so she could take a picture with her face. Yeah, we needed a, an explanation, not supernatural per se, maybe science related, kind of like Ella the monkey and George Romero's Monkey Shines, which is connected to the, the paraplegic man she's helping uh, and killing people based on the rage that he's experiencing. We needed... I don't know. It's just like these, these elements are there and they just took, they just needed like a lot of things, a little more finessing to really pop. Yeah. I don't have much else to say. I did think the final act drags on because it's all about the, after the election where like the sloth is attacking several people in the house. I did like the actor playing the house mother. Mrs. Mayflower played by Tiff Stevenson. Except that is such a trope making the house mother of sorority such an unabashed drunk. Sure, but... But she's fine. I don't know. She, they have her in some horrible outfits. Getting back to the fast forward one year, when all the ladies see each other, like Emily sees Brianna, because Brianna's not part... The, the mean girl who now seems to be nice, I guess. Even though the night they all were attacked, Brianna left Emily for dead. And then we don't see them anything. We, we don't see them reconcile anything. And then we flash forward a year, and Brianna tells Emily... Thanks for saving me. I love you. For real? Yeah, no, get out of here, bitch. <laughs> I'm uh, not trying to be serious about a silly movie. I just think that... No, but it could have... This really could have been, like the references we made, a Jawbreaker or Heather's mashup with Gremlins. And that could have been really fun. Well, yeah, because the film is well made and like a lot of thought went into it. The social media aspect of it, because we see like pop-ups of like what's happening on social media and like every character we meet has like a profile with a number of followers and like their bio line. So I like all of that in the detail, but yeah, it's just, I, I, I feel like the joke of the killer sloth is not utilized the way it should be in this movie. Right. Or, but, and then where you can make up for that, maybe if the budget isn't the most, this film in Belgrade, by the way, oh. uh, is, is with characterization. And then we have, like, we get this really odd scene where the night, which is for some reason happening on the same night of the election, I don't know why, uh, that they're hazing the new recruits yeah. for the sorority, which includes something called, uh, 
trust showers. Where they're blindfolded taking showers fully clothed. In cold water. I thought that was odd. Like, you know, it, it just almost felt like, I don't know. It almost feels like this movie might have been like, the sloth was an afterthought. Like they had a script for like a sor like sorority girl thing. I don't know. It, it just, for something called Slother House, there, there wasn't enough sloth killing. For me, for my taste, we but just we just needed an unabashed homosexual, I think, to really, I, to really crank this up to the nine. Well, you don't know that this person isn't. Mm, I'm doubtful. Uh, th also, the not that I'm usually paying attention to these details, but there were an awful large amount of ugly shoes. There were a lot of chunky, like uh, slide on heels. Yeah, I do want to say, but all the ladies are really good, nice the ladies looking. are fine, but some of the clothes. Are nice. <laughs> I think a better version of this story would have been you have this Emily girl who's a member of a sorority. She's really sweet, but the president's awful and she rescues a sloth that makes her like super popular. And now she can be president and the sloth is helping her get revenge on all these people. But because Emily is not a vengeful person. She's not instructing the sloth to do anything. So I think that could have been a really easy way to have this gag of this killer sloth who's super smart. I just didn't like that Emily didn't seem like a sweet, innocent girl. Yeah, I don't give, I don't give a damn that she made it either. Um, yeah. And, and, and that said, you know, I, I think to just the state of the world, Janet, that, I... that we are... It's are f kind of fine with it because it's not as bad as you think it would be. Yeah. But also, it, it just, like many things, there's such there's such an opportunity there to be so much better. I can see people enjoying this a lot, and I wouldn't be mad. Um, right. And I can see this being like a cult kind of favorite or like a midnight thing. Sure. I just, and for it being PG-13, I just am so confused. There's a part where the sloth roofies a girl. Yeah, the, the sloth of drugs a girl. With, I guess, their own... Uh, Alpha's own medication sedative yeah. that I don't that I still don't understand because when uh, Emily snatched that sloth out of uh, O Exotic's house, she grabbed the bottle of sedatives. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that was. Anyway, anyway, what would you give this movie? One and a half. I, for most of it, I was at a two, but it just, uh, yeah, one and a half for me. I think I'll give it two out of five, <laughs> but I didn't care for it. Hit the thanks button, listen to our podcast. Bye.